The genetic story of Australian Aboriginal peoples represents one of the most remarkable chapters in human migration and adaptation, spanning over 65,000 years of continuous occupation and cultural development. Modern genomic research has revealed a complex narrative of early maritime colonisation, regional diversification, and extraordinary temporal continuity that challenges many previous assumptions about hunter-gatherer societies and early human dispersal patterns. Archaeological evidence from Majid Baby in Arnhem Land has fundamentally transformed our understanding of when humans first reached Australia. Intensive stone tool use, ground ochre deposits, and sophisticated grinding stones dated to approximately 65,000 years ago provide compelling evidence for an early and technologically advanced occupation. This site preserves the world's earliest ground edge axe fragments alongside extensive pigment use, demonstrating that the initial colonizers possessed versatile Pleistocene toolkits far more sophisticated than previously imagined. The journey to reach Australia required unprecedented maritime capabilities. Paleogeographic modeling reveals that even during periods of lowest sea level, the voyage from Southeast Asia through the Wallacean archipelago demanded purposeful ocean crossings of at least 90 kilometers. Demographic simulations indicate that successful colonization was not the result of a single accidental voyage, but rather required coordinated efforts involving hundreds to thousands of people arriving over multiple expeditions. The Timor Roti route emerges as the most likely pathway, with subsequent rapid expansion along inland superhighways shaped by river systems, mountain ridges, and resource rich nodes. The southeastern archaeological record provides additional crucial evidence for early continental occupation. The Willandra Lakes region, including Lake Mungo, preserves some of the world's earliest evidence for complex mortuary practices. Mungo Lady, representing the earliest known cremation, and Mungo Man, both dating to approximately 40,000 to 42,000 years ago, demonstrate sophisticated ritual behaviours and deep time continuity in burial traditions. These finds, combined with the northern evidence from Majid Baby, point to a remarkably rapid continent-wide spread following initial landfall, establishing human presence across diverse environments within several millennia of first arrival. Modern genomic analyses have revealed the fundamental genetic architecture underlying Aboriginal Australian populations, demonstrating both deep continuity and structured regional differentiation. Whole genome studies consistently show that Aboriginal Australians and Papuans diverged from a common ancestral population tens of millennia ago, with subsequent isolation and independent evolution shaping distinct genetic profiles. Within Australia itself, ancient east-west population structure emerged early and has persisted across tens of thousands of years, creating a genetic landscape that reflects both initial colonisation patterns and subsequent regional adaptation. Tasmania's unique genetic profile illustrates the profound impact of geographic barriers on population structure. Following the flooding of Bass Strait during the late Pleistocene and early Holocene periods, Tasmanian populations became genetically and culturally isolated from mainland Australia. This separation created distinct evolutionary trajectories, with Tasmanian peoples developing unique genetic signatures that reflect approximately 10,000 years of independent evolution on an island continent. Regional genetic differentiation within mainland Australia correlates strongly with linguistic and cultural boundaries, suggesting that population structure was established early and maintained through cultural mechanisms. These patterns contradict models of recent population replacement or large-scale migration, instead supporting long-term regional continuity with limited gene flow between distant populations. One of the most significant discoveries in recent genomic research concerns the substantial archaic human ancestry present in Aboriginal Australian genomes. Aboriginal Australians, along with Papuans, carry some of the highest levels of Denisovan DNA found in any living populations, comprising approximately 3-6% to of their total genome. This Denisovan ancestry represents at least one admixture event distinct from that observed in East Asian populations, suggesting multiple episodes of interbreeding between modern humans and Denisovans, as our ancestors dispersed through Southeast Asia and Wallacea. The pattern of Denisovan ancestry distribution implies that admixture occurred in or near the Wallacean archipelago before the peopling of Sahul. This timing suggests that the ancestors of Aboriginal Australians encountered Denisovan populations during their maritime journey toward Australia, incorporating genetic material that would prove advantageous for survival in new environments. Some of the introgressed Denisovan sequences appear to have been positively selected, 
particularly those involved in immune system function and adaptation to tropical environments. Neanderthal ancestry is also present in Aboriginal Australian genomes, though at lower levels than Denisovan contributions. The implications of archaic admixture extend beyond simple genetic ancestry. Functional genomic analyses suggest that some introgressed sequences contributed to adaptive capabilities that may have facilitated successful colonisation of Australia's diverse environments. Immune system genes show particular enrichment for archaic ancestry, potentially providing protection against novel pathogens encountered during expansion into new ecological niches. Mitochondrial DNA analysis has revealed the extraordinary depth and regional structure of Aboriginal Australian maternal lineages. Indigenous Australian populations carry ancient, largely continent-specific mitochondrial clades, including M42A, various S lineages, and multiple P sublineages. The ages of these lineages, estimated through molecular clock analyses, align closely with archaeological evidence for Pleistocene settlement, with most dating to approximately 39,000 to 55,000 years ago. The geographic distribution of mitochondrial haplogroups across Australia provides crucial insights into colonisation patterns and subsequent population dynamics. Rather than showing evidence for a single entry point followed by gradual expansion, the mitochondrial data suggest multiple entry points into Saho with subsequent regionalization and limited long-distance gene flow. Northern Australian populations show distinct mitochondrial profiles compared to central and southern groups while eastern and western populations also display characteristic differences. The M42A haplogroup demonstrates particularly strong regional structuring, with different sublineages concentrated in specific geographic regions. This pattern suggests that initial colonisation involved multiple groups that established distinct regional populations early in Australia's human history. The subsequent evolution and diversification of these lineages occurred largely in isolation, creating the complex mosaic of maternal ancestry observed in contemporary populations. Lineage-specific mutation rates and demographic modelling based on mitochondrial DNA support scenarios involving substantial founding populations rather than small founder effects. Y-chromosome analysis reveals that Aboriginal Australian paternal lineages are dominated by continent-specific haplogroups that trace their origins to the initial colonisation period. The predominant lineages include CM, 347 and SP308, alongside smaller contributions from KM526 variants. These clades represent Australia-specific evolutionary branches that diverged from their closest relatives approximately 40,000 to 50,000 years ago, providing strong evidence for long-term genetic continuity and limited subsequent male-mediated gene flow. The CM347 haplogroup represents the most widespread paternal lineage across Aboriginal Australia, showing internal diversity that reflects both the time depth of occupation and regional population structure. Molecular dating analyses indicate that the divergence between Aboriginal Australian sea lineages and their closest South Asian relatives occurred approximately 50,000 years ago, effectively ruling out substantial Holocene gene flow from the Indian subcontinent as proposed by some earlier studies. The SP308 haplogroup shows more restricted geographic distribution, but equally deep time depth, suggesting that multiple paternal lineages were present in the founding population. The regional distribution of S lineages correlates with specific cultural and linguistic boundaries, indicating that paternal ancestry has been maintained through cultural mechanisms that preserve distinct group identities over thousands of generations. Y chromosome diversity patterns also reveal evidence for post-colonization population dynamics. Some regions show evidence for population bottlenecks followed by expansion, while others maintain signatures of stable population sizes over extended periods. The linguistic landscape of Aboriginal Australia represents one of the world's most complex and diverse language families. Pama Nyungan, which covers approximately 90% of the continent, constitutes the largest hunter-gatherer language family by geographic range, encompassing hundreds of distinct branches. Phylogenetic reconstruction of Pama Nyungan internal structure reveals a complex history of language spread and diversification that correlates with genetic and archaeological evidence for population movements and cultural change. Northern Australia hosts several non Pama Nyungan language families, including Gunwiniguan and Daly, highlighting the continent's extraordinary linguistic diversity. This distribution pattern suggests that the initial colonization involved speakers of multiple language families with subsequent expansion and contact, 
creating the complex linguistic mosaic observed historically. The maintenance of such extreme linguistic diversity over tens of thousands of years reflects both the geographic scale of Australia and the cultural mechanisms that preserved distinct group identities. Recent phylogeographic modelling has explored potential connections between mid-Holocene cultural changes and language spread patterns. Some analyses suggest that the expansion of Pamanyungan languages may correlate with technological innovations and environmental changes during the mid-Holocene period. However, these models also emphasize the extensive contact and borrowing between language groups, indicating that the linguistic landscape was shaped by both expansion and interaction processes. Archaeological evidence demonstrates remarkable technological sophistication from the earliest periods of occupation. The Majid baby assemblages include not only ground edge axes, but also evidence for complex pigment processing, sophisticated stone tool production, and diverse resource exploitation strategies. These technological capabilities remained central to Aboriginal societies throughout their history, with continuous innovation and adaptation to changing environmental conditions. The mid to late Holocene period witnessed the proliferation of backed artefacts, microliths, across large portions of the continent. These sophisticated composite tools reflect flexible responses to environmental variability and changing subsistence strategies. Rather than representing a single invention event, the backed artifact tradition appears to have emerged independently in multiple regions, as groups adapted to similar environmental challenges and opportunities. Fire management practices represent one of the most significant technological innovations in Aboriginal societies. Patterned burning, often termed fire stick farming, increased landscape patchiness and biodiversity while enhancing hunting returns. Detailed studies of contemporary groups such as the Martu in the Western Desert demonstrate that these practices reflect intimate ecological knowledge accumulated over thousands of generations. Fire management shaped Australia's ecosystems profoundly, creating landscapes that European observers often mistook for pristine wilderness, but which actually represented sophisticated environmental engineering. The arrival of the dingo approximately 3,500 years ago marked a significant change in Australian ecosystems and Aboriginal societies. While the dingo's introduction coincided with cultural and subsistence changes in some regions, the relationship between cause and effect varies considerably across different parts of the continent. Some groups integrated dingo management into their subsistence strategies, while others maintained traditional practices with minimal change. Aboriginal spiritual systems, often glossed as dreaming or dreamtime, represent sophisticated cosmological frameworks that integrate law, country, kinship, and responsibility. Terms such as Warlpiri Chukurpa and Pitjant Jajara Chukurpa describe complex belief systems that are not merely mythological narratives, but active frameworks for understanding and managing relationships between people, land, and spiritual forces. These systems provide prescriptive guidance for correct conduct and maintain connections between past, present, and future generations. Contemporary scholarship emphasizes that dreaming concepts should not be understood as referring to a past time period, but rather as an everyone that remains active in ceremony, song lines, and daily life. This temporal understanding reflects sophisticated philosophical concepts about the nature of time, causation, and spiritual presence that have been maintained across tens of thousands of years of cultural transmission. Song lines represent one of the most complex aspects of Aboriginal cosmological systems, describing spiritual pathways that cross the continent and encode both geographical knowledge and cultural law. These systems serve multiple functions simultaneously. They preserve detailed environmental knowledge, maintain cultural connections across vast distances, provide navigation aids for long distance travel, and encode complex spiritual and social relationships. Australian rock art represents one of the world's longest continuous artistic traditions, with evidence extending deep into the Pleistocene period. The oldest securely dated painting, a kangaroo figure from the Kimberley region, demonstrates sophisticated artistic capabilities in the earliest periods of human occupation. Charcoal paintings at Nawarla Gabarnmang extend even further back in time, providing additional evidence for early artistic traditions. The diversity of artistic media and techniques employed across different regions and time periods reflects both environmental adaptation and cultural innovation. Ochre paintings, rock engravings, stenciled designs, and beeswax figures demonstrate technical sophistication and artistic vision, maintained across hundreds of generations. The Western Desert Art Movement of the 1970s, centered on Papunya Tula, represents a remarkable transformation of traditional artistic practices. 
Senior cultural authorities guided the translation of ceremonial designs onto acrylic canvases, creating new forms of artistic expression while maintaining connections to ancestral knowledge systems. Archaeological and historical evidence documents various forms of external contact prior to European colonization. Macassan Trepang voyages from Sulawesi created seasonal trading relationships with Northern Australian groups from at least the 1700s, and possibly much earlier. These interactions left lasting impacts through loanwords in Aboriginal languages. Artistic motifs incorporating new design elements and material culture changes reflecting access to metal tools and other trade goods. The Macassan contact demonstrates Aboriginal society's capacity for selective cultural adoption and integration of external influences. Rather than passive recipients of foreign culture, Aboriginal groups actively negotiated these relationships, incorporating useful elements while maintaining fundamental aspects of their own cultural systems. Archaeological evidence from Northern Australia shows how different groups responded variably to these contact opportunities, with some developing extensive trading relationships, while others maintained more limited interactions. These pre-European contacts provide important context for understanding Aboriginal society's responses to later European colonisation. The selective and strategic nature of earlier cultural exchanges demonstrates sophisticated decision-making processes and cultural resilience that continue to characterise Aboriginal responses to subsequent challenges. The arrival of Europeans in 1788 initiated catastrophic demographic and cultural changes that fundamentally altered Aboriginal Australia. Introduced diseases to which Aboriginal populations had no immunity caused massive population declines. Smallpox epidemics swept through Aboriginal communities ahead of the expanding European frontier, creating demographic collapse even in regions not yet directly colonised. Estimates suggest that the Aboriginal population declined by 80 to 90% during the first century of European presence. Violence, dispossession and forced removals compounded the impacts of disease. The disruption of traditional land management practices, restriction of movement across ancestral territories and breakdown of traditional social structures created cascading effects that extended far beyond immediate mortality. Genomic datasets from contemporary populations register clear signatures of recent population bottlenecks and demographic instability that reflect these traumatic historical experiences. Forced assimilation policies, including child removal programs, created additional disruptions to cultural and genetic continuity. These policies deliberately targeted cultural transmission systems, removing children from their families and communities in attempts to eliminate Aboriginal cultural identity. The genetic and cultural impacts of these policies continue to influence contemporary Aboriginal communities, and complicate efforts to reconstruct pre-contact population patterns and cultural systems. Despite the massive disruptions of the colonial period, genomic analyses of contemporary Aboriginal populations reveal remarkable persistence of ancient genetic signatures. Deep phylogenetic structure dating to the Pleistocene period remains detectable, and regional genetic differentiation continues to reflect pre-contact population boundaries. Modern genomic studies also reveal evidence for post-contact admixture with European and other populations. However, these recent genetic contributions have not erased the fundamental genetic architecture established during the initial colonisation of Australia. Aboriginal genomic heritage remains clearly distinguishable and provides important connections to ancestral knowledge systems and cultural practices. Contemporary Aboriginal communities are leading efforts to revitalise endangered languages, restore traditional land management practices, and reconnect with ancestral cultural knowledge. These revitalisation movements often integrate genomic research results with traditional knowledge systems. The integration of genomic research with community-led cultural programs requires careful attention to Indigenous intellectual property rights and community consent processes. Ancient DNA studies in particular raise complex ethical questions about the analysis of ancestral remains and the interpretation of genetic data that may have spiritual and cultural significance extending beyond scientific inquiry. Over 65,000 years, Aboriginal societies developed sophisticated technologies, complex social systems, and rich cultural traditions while maintaining genetic and cultural continuity across one of the world's most challenging continental environments. This achievement represents one of humanity's greatest evolutionary and cultural successes, 